I never stated it was thrown by you at any person. Mr. Speaker, you said it, I allegedly sent some some bailiffs. Allegedly. I, 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 no, 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 no. Mr. Speaker, then clarify. Mr. Please. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, listen listen to me, Mr. Speaker, listen. Honorable Majority Leader, I don't want to proceed to make some orders. Please, resume your seat. I'm very serious about that. Mr. Speaker, Mr. please, resume your seat. Honourable member, honourable member, your 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 Coming events cast their shadows. We have Parliament now, in there with the Executive. Ebusi yango kap yango parliament yango parliament yango e dia kwaso parliament e ya afanyo makin se na afanyo so e ya ben baben e dia si eni woho e dia pano mu dia si eni woho wunse e ya kunya bi beto e omo chere se eni pa fubi asi se ya yeka so muntu mi ma parliament biem according to e ya ben baben ni beto ya a ben baben ti ni biem ana e ya afanyo makin se sujina si woho e no mumi enu dia si eni nengo mu mu di eni se according to e ya afanyo makin se Actually, say I've been babbling into me as well to me, and you to me now, why and Wakasa move beyond Kabi, no mean DC any was so ho, and Tabin Babbe can not have your markings or can't Ubu, I would try and throw a small kind in Ukrainian name and phone a woodcha, and your parliament to a Yasam Ketua. You need gun could tea as someone I have been babbling in Kaka, a senior puff for be, or mean to me see parliament to be a moon. A dear beam there see which, according to a Sasam or the Batua Bonte. Proceeded to declare the seat vacant. However, I must emphasize that this ruling made by the previous speaker does not bind other speakers, including myself. It is important to point out that in the present matter before the House, the notice of poll is available at the Electoral Commission on all the 275 constituencies. I have duly taken note of the notice of the poll and furthermore, no member in making comments to the statement made to the House by the minority leader denies these glaring and notorious facts. And so, what is my role in all this? Honorable members, it is important to point out that the Speaker is called upon by the standing orders of Parliament, particularly Order 18, to inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under clause 1b to e g and h of article 97 of the constitution accordingly i proceed to inform the house that by the notification of the polls the following members of parliament are by their actions vacated their seats in parliament the members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwache Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti Region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia 
Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Agona West constituency in the central region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The house is accordingly so informed. Simbuina, eh, I've been babbing the better one thing. Says Uncle for ninety member. Na ye wo hwa na eja eh afenyo makins so ene eya abemba ben die se ani na omonte me ho ase bi koso proceedings e koso o eya parliament ho na ye xemra o nti ho asem de beto bia wo si ni etime ka bi ni e chere ya adwene wo ho ye nko tie de koso e wo afenu mienu no omu mienu nko ma na omu di to the house and by our standing orders is information i have to give you and i've done so according to my understanding of the law Please, uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, with respect, I thank you for the opportunity to make comments on the communication you have just delivered to the House. May you kindly refer to the standing orders that you are coming under. Mr. Speaker, I do not come under any standing orders. So, you may if, resume your seat then. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you are, you are the father of this house. And Mr. Speaker, you, you, have, you have communicated to the house a position you've taken. It's been our practice that any time you have come out with a formal communication, you give opportunity to leadership to make a response. Mr. Speaker, if today you do not want me to talk, Mr. Speaker, that should be it. But Mr. Speaker, if you say that... Honor, Honorable authority, member, Honorable member, you got it wrong. It's not the practice of the House that any time I come with a formal communication, I allow members to make comments. That's not the practice of the House. It's never been the practice no, no, of worry, any of the houses that I have been member from 1993 to date. I have not had that as any practice of the house. Some speakers, including myself, may entertain some comments from members, but it is not a practice of the house. Mr. Speaker, if it pleases you, I would like to make some few comments on the matters you've raised. Because, Mr. Speaker, these are very grave matters. The matters you've raised are not light matters. They are very grave matters that I would want to comment. And, Mr. Speaker, So please, you want to seek my leave to make comments? That is so, respectfully. Now you agree it's not the practice, Mr. Speaker, you are just seeking my leave. Mr. Speaker, as it pleases you, with your leave. With your leave. Well, yes, you may do so. Mr. Speaker, Thank you once again for the leave granted me to comment on your communication you just delivered. Mr. Speaker, you underscored your submissions with a very important point, that the matter that came before us has interpretation interpretation <clears throat> reliefs and that you do not have the power to interpret the constitution and that your duty is to enforce 
Mr. Speaker. Honorable member, you are not listening to me. Mr. Speaker, may I finish with respect? All what you said are wrong, so Mr. I Speaker, cannot continue to allow Mr. you Speaker, to keep on Mr. misleading Speaker, the House. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, please, if, if, if you think that this is your house and you didn't want us to talk, Mr. so be, Mr. Speaker, we should allow Honorable you to Honorable Majority Leader, you are addressing the Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, you may, please. I need your protection. They must stop what they are doing. I am in charge. Mr. Speaker, then Anytime. they may be quiet. Please, please. Mr. Speaker, with respect, in your, in, your, in your ruling, my understanding was to the effect that your duty is not to interpret the Constitution. My understanding was to the effect that your duty is not to interpret the Constitution. But Mr. Speaker, it is important for me to emphasize one more time that when the statement was made by my respected colleague, Dr. Kesil Atufosil, I did draw the attention of the House, including your good self, to the effect that the matter being a very grave matter, I have taken it upon myself to seek the court's interpretation of the matter. Mr. Speaker, indeed. Mr. Speaker, I, I think, I, I think, I think Honorable I deserve members, some respect. Please, Mr. Speaker, let's listen I think to I each deserve other. some respect. Let's listen to each other. Please. No, no, I, I, think, I think it is only fair. Honorable Majority Leader, please address me. I'm taking care of that. Please, Mr. let's Speaker, listen to each other. I did indicate that I have filed a process at the Supreme Court. And indeed, Mr. Speaker, the belief of the court had attempted to serve the process on the Director of Legal Affairs. And the Director of Legal Affairs and the entire Legal Directorate refused service because, according to them, there was a circular stating that they can only be served on Mondays. I saw the circular myself. Subsequent to that, I asked, hearing the intention of Mr. Speaker to come to a determination in one way or the other, the directed service, which is within my rights, my Mr. Speaker, yesterday, yesterday, Parliament was duly served. Honorable member, please, I didn't want to interrupt you. But you are the, the majority leader and the leader of this house. As at the time you were directing service yourself, you took the trouble of coming to Parliament with two persons who alleged to be bailiffs and went to the legal office and went to the legal office to yourself directing officials of the legal office to receive the service. You are a member of parliament. I am the speaker. It is my duty to protect your privileges and immunities. In, the, in doing so, I had a discussion with the Chief Justice, and we came to an understanding that in the meantime, the Chief Justice will issue a directive as to how service of members of parliament, some officers of parliament, and the speaker could be effected. I communicated this to the House and discuss it with you, the leaders. We said that as we go along, we will together, Parliament and the judiciary, particularly led by the Supreme Court, come out with a legislation on this issue of privileges and immunities of Parliament, members of Parliament, and specified officials of Parliament. We discussed this. Based on this discussion, the Chief Justice issued a directive to all registries of courts in the country. And it is stated clearly there 
that the speaker can be saved on Mondays during working hours. There were reasons why we came to those agreements. You are aware of it, yet you kept on insisting that service be effected whilst the speaker was presiding over the proceedings of the house. You as leader of the house, as majority leader, you are saying that this was service because you threw the court processes on the table and walked away? Is that how you effect service? Please, Mr. to quote the common parlance, don't go there. Uh, with respect, for the past 12 years, I have accorded you every respect, and I'll continue to do that. No matter. Mr. Speaker, the facts you put out are not true. Mr. Speaker, these are credibility issues, so I will respond honorable, for the honorable, honorable. Mr. Speaker, somebody has told you something. Mr. Speaker, you reserve the right to be there to make your point. Let me make my point too. Mr. Speaker, no way. Mr. Speaker, no way. I won't. Mr. Speaker, whoever told you, Mr. Speaker, whoever told you that I threw a paper at somebody, this has to do with my credibility. I will not allow her. No, honorable member, you don't listen at all. Mr. Speaker, I do. I never said Mr. you. Mr. Speaker, you said I Alex. never said you threw a paper at anybody. Mr. Speaker, I Mr. never Speaker, said that. That's exactly what you said. Let the anger check it. You Mr. See, Speaker, that is what you said. You are being carried away by your Mr. anger. Speaker, you are not I'm listening. Not Mr. Speaker, I'm not angry. Honorable all. member. Honorable member. Mr. Speaker, I'm not angry. I said the court process yes. was thrown on the table in the office. I never stated it was thrown by you at any person. Mr. Speaker, you said it, I allegedly said some, some bailiffs. Alleged I, I, bailiffs. I, I Mr. Speaker, no, 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 no. Mr. Speaker, then clarify. Mr. Please. Speaker, Mr. Speaker with listen respect, to me. Me. Mr. Speaker, listen to me. Mr. Speaker, listen. Honorable Majority Leader, I don't want to proceed to make some orders. Please, resume your seat. I'm very serious about that. Mr. Speaker, Mr. please resume your seat. Enti afenyo wye yeno, ena ofre eye press. So mumbrani ye enfa press, eye nto abonti. Ami enye press release, nto abonti nko fu huni oma kotiya. Opese wo chile ankasa. Enti press ni so de camera kotito so. E de makro fun kotito nano. Enu anu so di nese mo opengi na etu abonti. Ene ne nyasem kitwa. Abusi ya. Ubeti milu komenta ba di esi. Uhu ni sen. Biko mahamba kula ba abu nteng wase. Aish. Ase ma aben bape kan eleche se me di nkun imdiye. Biko se nkun imdiye ne eba ne hon pon pon. Anase e hon e hon pon proye. E bi ene esi e wo parliament. E ma e ye. John Dramani mahamba kula ko jina simpi isu wa wo di nko mono. Wa di bitu ja. Ba si si ya ye kase misa di eno. Asa over ten. Yoko ni yoko tiye di eko. Vigorously pursue our matter in court. We believe in the court. And we are going to pursue our matter in court until the court determines the matter. If the court makes a determination that indeed, per the provisions of Article 97.3, uh, if a person, upon being elected a member of parliament on a particular ticket and decides to contest future elections under another ticket, that person will lose that seat, so be it, would abide by the rulings of the court. So, we will stay back and not want to participate in the chaos in the chamber created by Mr. Speaker. Meanwhile, we have become aware that the injunction application has been overtaken by event. We are lawyers. We know what to do. And we will be fortified by the law to look for another process to ensure that the right things are done. So we'll argue our case in court. Meanwhile, we call upon the good people of Ghana to condemn the, con the, 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 the conduct of Mr. Speaker and then the NDC minority. And it was very rich. It was very rich to hear Dr. Forsen immediately proclaiming to be a majority leader. In fact, Mr. Speaker himself, in spite of doing their bidding, fell short of declaring them to be the majority. In spite of all, 
And then he still found space to address me as majority leader and still address him as minority leader. But again, they further exposed themselves. Because immediately after, their flag bearer was on a campaign platform claiming that God has given them the majority uh, status. Is that how God grants majority status on individuals who are full of mischief, vicious, and evil? What they did was evil. What they did in parliament yesterday was evil. NDC does not believe in democracy. They believe in chaos. And we are law-abiding citizens. We in the MPP are Democrats. We believe in the rule of law. And that is why we calmly left the chamber for them. And we know that if we make our case well in court, the court will make a determination that would advance the cause of democracy. Again, to our party full soldiers, our parliamentary candidates, and all party members across the length and breadth of the country, these are useful lessons to learn. I urge on all of you that looking at the chaos in parliament, we don't want skirt and blouse. We don't want situations where you say that somebody in NDC is your friend. At this moment, they have shown to us that if they get an opportunity again to have numbers in parliament, there will be chaos. They want to frustrate government business as it is today. We have the judges, the Supreme Court judges who have been vetted and are supposed to be approved to work for the nation. They don't want that to happen. There are businessmen who have invested in our country because of our 1D1F policy. Their projects have to be approved. The NDC doesn't want that, so they want there to be chaos. The finance minister is supposed to present some papers to parliament regarding uh, budget, before budget before appropriation. This cannot happen. So they don't believe in democracy. They want chaos because they want an opportunity to come back to first on us their incompetence. We know how they never believed in the free SHS policy. How they never believed in the free SHS policy. How they don't even have a single social intervention program standing in their name. These are the people who want to create chaos and use that as an opportunity to, to come back to power. I want to tell every single Ghanaian listening to me today that NDC has nothing new. In fact, upon launching their manifesto, it was clear that they had nothing new to offer. They claim a so-called 24-hour economy. But if you even ask them to explain, they get upset and angry. They can't even point to a particular thing they mean by 24-hour economy. I know that MPP hasn't been perfect, and MPP cannot be perfect. But I believe in the dreams and the vision of Dr. Baumia. I believe in the new vision of digitalizing our economy to create opportunity for our Ghanaian youth. On every aspect of the economy, we have done far better than we came to meet it in 2017. I appeal <coughs> to party members to go all out. Like I said in Tekrade, enough of the infighting, enough of the meetings, full soldiers, police station executives, party chairpersons, parliamentary candidates should go all out to give a resounding victory, overwhelming majority to the MPP to govern peacefully and prove to these guys who don't believe in the Ghana agenda that chaos is not the way to advance democracy. Thank you very much indeed, and God bless our homeland Ghana and make it great and strong. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, there will be Q&A, but you need to catch my attention. And then I'll direct you to still the majority leader. So show by hand if you are interested. I would have said that with this detailed and proper presentation, probably all the naughty 
observations, but okay, we, we, we'll, we'll see. Um, not according to any other. Let me start from you. We'll take three at a go. So you, and then you, and then D, as the first set. Please. Thank you. My name is In the light of all this development, um, the lifespan of this parliament has not ended. You have your colleagues going um, independent, I think three, two of them. Is there an opportunity to really further engage, learning lessons from what is going on? Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Please. Uh, Alida, you have a government business to run. Boycotting parliament means the items you mentioned will not see the light of day. How do you explain this to the Ghanaian people? Let me answer the two. The, the, the last one for this session. Dean. I think your question drafts into this. My, my dean and my respected colleagues uh, who have asked the, uh, this question. First of all, let's put the issues in context. My members who are going independent, i.e. the MP for Suhum and the MP for Agona West, have not applied to me to say that they are no more part of the caucus. Two, the party has not taken any action to dismiss them from the party. Neither have they written to resign from the party. They have only expressed an intent to participate in the next elections as independent candidate. As it is today, as a matter of fact, their status as members of parliament on the ticket of MPP remain same. It hasn't changed. Two, the independent candidate who applied to caucus with MPP has not changed his stand. So nothing has changed in terms of how the composition of parliament is as of today. Indeed, I am in touch with Honorable Amwaku Esiama, and in fact, I'm happy to even announce to you that he is also filing a separate action as a result of the conduct of Mr. Speaker. So you will soon see an action filed by him because what Mr. Speaker has done is to deny his constituents yes. an opportunity to be heard. Yes. I don't want to go into the legal issues, but politically, what Mr. Speaker has done is wrong and it doesn't help democracy. Let's leave it that way. Okay, so, uh, yes. That's Joy, right? Okay. Thank you very much, Joy FM, you people are known for a lot of mischief. And I would encourage you. No, I will say it. I will say it. I will say it. I will not pamper. No, no. So, yes. So, let me address Joy News. Joy News, your role as a media house is to help our democracy. Joy is becoming notorious. Joy FM is becoming notorious for misinforming and doing mischief. Yesterday, they were, the, they were quick to say that there is now a minority leader and a majority leader. I will not take any of that. I will say it, you can go and bash me, but I will assert my right. It's my bona fide. Your role, your role as a media house is to play your role objectively and help the cause of democracy. CTFM does it well. OKFM does it well. Peace FM does it well. GH Gun, uh, GH1. There are other media houses. They express their opinions, but they do the right thing. You are quick, always, to mislead people, and it's not right. Joy FM, I'm saying it today. You can single me out and start your mischief to destroy my brand. I don't really care. The time has come for the country to tell Joy FM that do it right and do it perfectly. That is all the point I want to make to you. So ask your question. Don't do the bidding of NDC. Leader, with respect, he's not speaking as... An individual. The things you've been doing to we us is not fair. Forces with him, and we are telling you in your face. Joy of him, why? It's becoming unbecoming. You are even like I would have denied you the right to ask a question. But you can black us out. 
We can black us out, Joy FM. You can black us out. Enough is enough. This is a protest, a far right protest from me. Enough is enough, Joy FM. Enough is enough. Your question, but you have to be snappy. <laughs> the majority leader, please do, say that correctly. Say that correctly. Can you address me properly? If you are not ready, I won't take your question and you can black me out. I'm saying address me properly. No, no, no. You are ruled out. Tell me, no, no, huh? Say it and uh, let's hear you again. Correct. <laughs> Yeah. That is so. Particularly zoom into the no, no. But also, no, no. I want to no, no. no. Article 39 of your constitution, because of our forfeiture of membership, it says a member of the party who stands as an independent candidate against the officially elected member of the party or who declares support for another political party or an independent automatically forfeits his or her membership. That is the operative word of the constitution. How do you, how do you marry that with the point that you have made that these persons still remain members of the party? Very well. Very well. Who we'll addressed that for you? I told you to be snappy, but you decided to ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we listen to you? <laughs> Constitution. No, no, I'll So, um, okay, just sure. the last one for this session. I'm sure you've adjusted your questions. We don't have any hand up, right? Okay, okay. I, I, I be you, you, you make a good point. The reason why I'm in court, you see, um, throughout my practice, I've always held a view that where there is lacuna or where there are divergent opinions, we don't have to remain on the streets and continue the gallery talk. Let's go to the right forum. And it's a reason why we are at the Supreme Court for interpretation, so that this matter will be settled once and for all. You know my track record <laughs> at the bar, so that will speak for itself. Back to my respected friend uh, uh, of, of, of Joy News, Kweku Asante. Kweku, every constitution, indeed, any written document, be it the Bible, Quran, any holy book, including our constitution, must be read as a whole. So the rule of, of automaticity does not really operate as, an, as a means to an end. Due process is always a preferred vehicle to achieve a means. That is why the old saying in law is that if all men find a man's hand in a tail, his guilt must be proven. I repeat, if all men find a man's hand in a tail, his guilt must be proven. Why that? To allow due process to take effect. So I don't expect you to say that, oh, MPP, you are caught by a particular provision 
in your constitution. So go by it. No. We are a political party operating with a constitution. So a person must also be heard. A person must be heard. No matter what. So don't let us get in there. But if Mr. Speaker had allowed the matters in issue to be properly determined, wouldn't it be where we are? Because my question is why the rush? In fact, what has become of the Harun Idrisu petition? He's rendered Harun Idrisu's petition otios. He's rendered the nogatory. It is like the Harun Idrisu application will lead to a due process being followed. So we don't want it. But when, when did we ever, you the media, you're asking a question today, and I've not heard you on your platforms questioning Mr. Speaker on that route. When did a speaker ever allow a statement to metamorphose into a motion for him to rule on? Joy FM did not address this yesterday. When did a statement metamorphose into a motion for a ruling? Is it the case that there is no provision for what to be, should be done when a statement is made? In any event, did what Ato Forcing do meet the requirement of a statement under Order 93? Please, when you have your uncle who is also a former attorney general, you will never be in want. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, a senior member for that matter. You know, the MPP constitution that you quoted, though I answered it generally, but the specific provision under three, rights of member. So though there's a clause that confers automaticity right on the party, there is also another arm that confers due process right of fair hearing on the member who is affected. So if you come here, right of a member, a member shall have the right to participate in all activities of the party subject to rules and regulations. Be heard whenever his or activities and conduct are in question and under consideration by the party. So if my member has decided to file as an independent candidate in the next election, and the party is not happy. The constitution, which you quoted, enjoins the party to hear the person, explain your activities. But that is not where we are. This is we NPP. This is us. We have not written to Mr. Speaker. They said they were following precedents. Even if that is the precedence they want to follow, that precedence was triggered by a certain process. Has NDC written to Mr. Speaker? Has NDC, has Fifi Kwete, as General Secretary of NDC, written to Mr. Speaker that, indeed, our member, uh, Kwache Aka, has been sacked? Has MPP written, I, as a majority leader, and leader of government business, and leader of the caucus, have I written to Mr. Speaker to say that this is a communication from the party? Of course not. Therefore, please proceed. So, they have placed something or nothing. And that is why it is falling. It's crashing. There is nothing. There is nothing that supports their actions. And when you want to make your point, Mr. Speaker begins to threaten you. Yeah. Yesterday, all of you saw the way he was threatening me. He became so apprehensive and called a marshal on us. I mean, I, I think it was most unfair that after Mr. Speaker has said all that he wanted to say, he now was pushing me by rules. That what rule am I up to respond? And all. And that what am I, what do I want to say? Basically stopping me from speaking. He didn't want me to speak. And I yielded to him because that is his platform. If parliament is all about speaker, he should take it. I repeat, if parliament is all about speaker, and in any event, what Mr. Speaker forgot yesterday is that he took a fit columnist from us to make him a speaker, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Often he forgets and does a bidding of NDC. If it's all the NDC members who voted for him, he wouldn't be speaker. But we leave that to posterity and his own good judgment.
Não, 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 não.